you ever looked at the back of your PTC camera and noticed there's a lot of different port options back there? Some of the connectors maybe you recognize, some of them I'm guessing you don't. So in this quick little video from the Honey Optics test bench, I'm going to show you all the different ports, what it is they do, the ones you probably want to use, and the ones you will probably never use. All right, so I have the back of my Honey Optics 4K pulled up here. Um, and we're just gonna start on the left and go from the left to the right. And I'm gonna explain to you quickly what each one of these does. The first one is your LAN port. Um, so this is gonna be recognizable. You probably have one on the back of your computer or maybe your laptop. Uh, this is quite simply how you connect it to your local network um, in your building or wherever you happen to be. What's special about the LAN port on most PTC cameras, including this one, is it is also a PoE port or power over ethernet port. So it is a way of getting data in and out of the camera, um, but also getting power to the camera. Uh, so if you're only running this um, to get a digital feed um, over your network, you can actually run with just this one cable, which is of course a nice feature. Above it, you have your audio in and your line out. So if you want to pass through your audio, basically take audio in from your soundboard or other device, um, and then get the line out um, to somewhere else downstream, um, you can do that as well. Typically, PTZ cameras aren't usually used very often for audio. It can be done, um, but oftentimes you'll use something else um, to bring the audio and the video together. All right, this one's probably very recognizable. It's your good friend HDMI. Um, same thing you have on the back of your TV or your laptop uh, or things like this. Uh, HDMI is great. Um, the one thing about, especially the HDMI port um, on this one, is th this is where you're going to get your 4K signal. So um, you can get a full 4K um, out of the HDMI port, which is nice. The limitation about HDMI is only to do with the cable range. HDMI was originally uh, described and, and spec'd for things like TVs, um, and you don't usually put your uh, you know, Bluetooth player or your, your Blu-ray player too far away from your television. Um, over time, the lengths have increased, and with fiber optic HDMI cables, um, you can go even further. Um, but that is a limitation because uh, any of the long, long, range solutions for HDMI uh, were kind of added afterwards and uh, they are not always the best. But if you're going to be close um, to your device, uh, your camera, and you have something uh, like a, uh, a Atom Mini or something like that that you're going to, that's expecting HDMI in. So there you go. Next up is USB 3.0. Um, as you can see here, we have the new uh, USB-C um, standard, uh, which is nice because you can't plug it in the wrong way. You can, there's no such thing as upside down anymore, which is super nice when you're connecting things. Um, you will find traditional um, uh, kind of the, the rectangular USBs um, as well. This lets you basically treat this um, as you would uh, like a webcam on a laptop, um, if that's what you want us to do. All right, I'm gonna skip up here real quick. This is system select. If you never want to get into uh, the, the, the back end of your um, camera, if you don't ever want to have to open up the configuration web page and all that kind of stuff, um, what the system select does is let you uh, select what resolution uh, the, it's going to capture in because it can capture in 4K, it can capture in 1080p, it can capture in 720 um, as well. One little note, um, kind of secret hidden thing um, about that is on the bottom, of most PTZ cameras, you will find a little chart that tells you um, what to set that dial to um, for your various resolution modes. Um, and it's nice that it's on the camera because it can vary sometimes. Um, so you won't actually find uh, oftentimes in the documentation for the camera what this does because it's actually on the camera itself. It's right there. All right, now we have two um, uh, RS connectors. Um, these, uh, this one, RS-232, uh, is a serial connection um, that was originally developed as a standard in the 1960s. Yes, that long ago. So these ones here and this one here, you are probably never going to use um, unless you have a very old kind of legacy um, like security system um, or something like that you want to tap into. Maybe you would use those. Um, you know, they're primarily used, um, you know, they're, they're primarily used for actually camera control. Um, so for moving the camera around um, and Honestly, I'm always not always sure why we even include them anymore, um, but you are probably never going to touch those. If you don't know what they are, that's fine. You can ignore it. All right, and finally down here, we have one that if you look on the bottom, kind of beneath it, it is labeled 3G 
SDI. Now, SDI um, actually does the same job as HDMI. Um, it's an older standard um, to a degree, uh, but it's also the broadcast standard. So if you look at professional broadcasting equipment, it's going, it's going to come with SDI-style connections. Um, it ha the cabling for this looks like a coax cable, so the old, think old school. If you had cable TV at your house or you have a you know, cable running to an antenna on your television, um, that's the style of cable. Um, the connector end is a little bit different. Um, it's actually got a lock end that's a lot easier to get on and off um, and it's quick but also secure uh, versus like when you had cable TV you had to sit there and twist, 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 twist. You don't have to do that anymore. Um, because this is the 3G standard, this will um, do HD quality video, uh, which is really great. You're not going to get 4K out of it. So if you need 4K, your options are going to be the HDMI um, or uh, one of the one of the like NDI, one of the solutions off of your LAN port. Um, but if you're just running 1080 anyway, uh, this is because this is a professional standard, um, it's designed to go further. So you can run 300 feet of SDI cable, no problem. Um, you can, um, the, the cable's a lot more durable um, and a lot more easy to, to work with and get around with. Um, and it has very, very low latency. Um, so you're not gonna get a lot of latency because again, this was originally a professional broadcast standard. Uh, they really, really care about that. You can buy, um, and we use uh, little boxes that will convert the SDI signal into HDMI um, at the other end if you need an HDMI. So you can do a long run of SDI and then a little run of HDMI at the end if that's what you wanna do. Uh, finally. We got your 12 volt in, um, you know, just like anything else does. If you're running PoE, you don't need to worry about that. Um, but if you're not, it's there for you. And then, of course, your power switch. And there you go. Those are the ports on the back of your HD or your PTZ camera. Um, some of them you may probably you're probably just using these three uh, right now if you're kind of in a standard arrangement. Uh, but if you got to go a good distance, really look at and consider that SDI. All right. Well, I hope you found this um, helpful and informative. Uh, thank you for stopping by and have a great day.